Mike Buckler. I met him right. at I Rush High School. I remember. I stayed friends with really good coach. Yeah, game. Yeah, with Mike, uh, just uh, Saturday, Sunday. You're not coach. Yeah. 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 How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Let me see a picture. Like stepping yeah, out. Like, <laughs> he came hot around that corner. <laughs> I just told her, I said, I need a new car. I'm pretty sure someone in the back of y'all ran me. This guy's crazy. I'll tell you what. He's got 20 20. We're going with you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. It's time to continue with this incredible football weekend. Um, we just concluded the official dedication of the Dom and, Care, Dom and Karen Capers Football Coaching Center. Now we'd like to dedicate Karis Stadium and Larry and Linda Karis Plaza. Good morning and welcome to the University of Mount Union and dedication of the Karis Stadium next to the site of the future Larry and Linda Karis Plaza. We are pleased that you're able to join us as we rename Ohio's oldest college football stadium in honor of the hard work, dedication, commitment of Larry Karras. There are so many things you can say about Larry Karras and the Karras family, but none of it would do justice to the Karras family and what they have meant to the University of Mount Union. But here are a few thoughts to come to mind. Where would the University of Mount Union be without the countless students that came to this university because of the success of the Mount Union football program? Where would, we be, where would we be without the many graduates of this university that came through the Mount Union football program? Working in the advancement office, we see up close and personal alumni around the country that take great pride in the success of the Purple Raider football team. Finally, you could make a strong case, you could make a strong case there has been no one that has had greater impact on Mount Union than Larry Karras and his family. In my humble opinion, this recognition is long overdue and incredibly deserved. At this time, now I'd like to invite to the podium Mr. Bill Unger, class of 1971, longtime friend, teammate, and college roommate of Larry's to share a few remarks. Bill. Wow, what an exciting day, and uh, what a great challenge for me to be able to come up here and, and speak to you. I mean, Larry Karras and I have so many stories and memories. Uh, it's like I'm wondering where should I begin, but I have to say I'm under strict orders not to make you wonder when I'm going to finish. So I, I, I try to keep it as short as possible. But uh, Larry and I, as many of you know, have been friends for a long, long time, going back to our high school years. Larry was uh, at Southeast High School, not too far up the road from here. And I was at Crestwood High School in Manaway, Ohio. Now, I can't say we were really friends during our high school years, but we certainly knew each other because we played football and basketball and baseball against each other uh, in what was then the uh, Portage County League. So it might be more appropriate to say we were friendly competitors back then. Um, yeah, like the time when he drilled me right in the back <laughs> with a fastball during one of our baseball seasons. So, uh, but wouldn't you know it, a couple years later, we ended up here at Mount Union being teammates and roommates right over there in uh, Miller Hall. And uh, now I'm, I'm saying this was strictly unintentional for sure, but I may have gotten even with him one day. Larry comes back to our room from the gym and he's limping. And I said, what happened? And he's, oh, I sprained my darn ankle. And he said, what do you think I should do about it? Well, I said, why don't you go down the hall and get that bucket and fill it with really, really warm water <laughs> and soak your foot in it for 10 minutes. And he did. 
and I'm sitting there in the room kind of watching, and poof, <laughs> that thing swelled up like crazy. <laughs> and I don't think he'll ever let me forget that, but uh, that, that was uh, one of our, I guess you could say a payback, but again, it was not intentional. Our senior year in high school, football season, Crestwood is playing at Southeast, and I had a miserable, miserable first half. In fact, our entire team was not playing well at all. And it was around mid-season, and we had still not won a, a football game. And we were very frustrated, uh, very disappointed, because the year before, we only lost one game. And we felt we had some talent coming back, but our previous coach had left, and for whatever reason, we just weren't getting things together uh, our senior year. So we go in at halftime, and I have to tell you, there was a lot of shouting and yelling going on in our locker room. And on the way back out to the, the field there at Southeast, I was walking slowly, head down, disappointed, frustrated. The Southeast players were going back to the field at the same time, and of course they were jogging and running past us. But this one player from Southeast slowed down just long enough to give me a little pat on the back and say, keep your chin up. And I looked up and it was Larry. Now, why would I remember that 55 years later? All I can say is what he did in those two seconds made an impression. And we can talk and we all know about the numbers the wins, the winning streaks, the uh, winning percentage, uh, the number of uh, conference championships, the national championships, those numbers are important. They are what most people typically would use to measure uh, a, a successful coaching career. But the impressions are important also. And to use an even stronger, more accurate word, the impacts that Larry has had on the lives of so many players, assistant coaches, his coaching colleagues, uh, his friends, and on the athletic program here at Mount Union, and, you know, not just the football program, but the entire athletic program. As athletic director, well, Larry was really good at recruiting great players to pursue their education here at Mount Union and play football. But as athletic director, he was also very good at recruiting great coaches to come here and fill the coaching positions of the other sports. And those great coaches also recruited great players to come here. And that results in a, a tremendous athletic program that has had a lot of success almost every year we're right up there near the top for the Ohio Conference All Sports Trophy. We simply cannot put a number on the positive impacts Larry has made <clears throat> for this university and the lives of so many people. But if we could, for sure, they would outnumber the number of victories he's had in his coaching career. Saturday evening in August 1967, my girlfriend Pam and I <clears throat> had a date in Chagrin Falls. We went there for dinner at this little restaurant and then we were going to have an ice cream cone and walk around that town. If you've ever been to Chagrin Falls, it's, it's a pretty cool place. So we go to this little restaurant, I think it was called Dink's colonial restaurant not there anymore <clears throat> and we no sooner get in and we're starting to sit down and who walks in but Larry and his girlfriend Linda and we were both so surprised to see each other and he said hey come on sit down with us we had the most enjoyable evening and I think right there is where the real friendship really got started and for many years since then we go back there and, and have dinner somewhere in Chagrin Falls, have an ice cream cone, and walk around 
walk around the town. <clears throat> Many times, and that's the first time we got to meet Linda too. And many times, or Pam to this day, still refers to Linda as the perfect coach's wife. And indeed, for sure, she is one of the nicest, friendliest, and most beautiful women south of the North Pole. And so it is totally, <laughs> it is totally appropriate and deserving that she should share in the naming of this stadium right alongside Larry. Linda, congratulations and thank you for all the support you've given to Larry in his coaching career and for all the work you've done behind the scenes that often goes unnoticed. Phenomenal. We, we, we so appreciate you. <laughs> Have you ever noticed how Larry <clears throat> often starts a conversation with the word, hey, <laughs> right? You've noticed that? Let me give you a couple examples. Like for sure, I know sometime this summer, Larry's gonna give me a call and he's gonna, so, he's gonna say, hey, Bill, Larry, let's get the wives and go to dinner in Chagrin Falls. That'll happen. And another good example, and most of you former players should remember this for sure. But in case you don't, I'm, I'm going to give you, I'm going to try my best to give you a little impersonation of Larry Karras. And you'll remember, I'm sure. <clears throat> and we're on the sidelines now during a football game. Hey, you knucklehead, where are you supposed to be on that play? See, I'm watching more than the football game when I, when I come to watch. I'm, I'm, I'm watching Larry, too. <clears throat> so that characteristic of Larry goes back to high school, all right? Uh, senior year, basketball season, uh, Crest, or Southeast is at Crestwood. <clears throat> and it's during a free throw, and Larry and I are taking our positions along the free throw lane. And I'm standing over there next to him, and before the referee gives the ball to the foul shooter, Larry goes, hey, where are you going to school next year? <laughs> Mount Union, how about you? I'm going to Wittenberg. Okay, well, more recently, we're at a restaurant, in a little diner in Twinsburg, having breakfast before a round of golf and there's these two elderly gentlemen there and they recognize Larry and, and one of them comes over and introduces himself to Larry and Larry starts laughing. He goes, hey, I remember you. You were the one that didn't hire me at Hiram College for the football <laughs> job back in 1984. <laughs> and then he says, Worst mistake I ever made as athletic director. <laughs> so in closing, I think there are three things that we can be really, really grateful for. Number one, that Larry changed his mind and decided to come to Mount Union instead of going to Wittenberg. Number two, that that athletic director at Hiram felt he had a far better football coach than Larry Karras <laughs> to take over the football program there. And number three, and I think most important, that all of us here and all of us that couldn't be here are a part of this legendary story and that we are all connected with and through this legendary coach and friend, Larry Karras. Thank you. And now would you please join me in welcoming to the podium Mr. Steve Harder, class of 1984, two-time All-American athlete and M-Club Hall of Famer. Steve? Well, I've done this a couple times, and I don't think I've ever been more nervous in my life.
Coach, you still mad at me? Huh? Huh? No? Yeah, you're still mad at me. I, you, you ignored me last night at the party. I know. Um, how many how many football players are here that played for Coach Karras? Can all you guys walk over there, please? Stand over in that grassy spot. Right now, I'd rather be one of you guys, okay? How many people know Johnny Cash? How many young guys you know Johnny Cash? There's a song called Boy Named Sue by Johnny Cash. Kicked like a mule, bit like an alligator, been in tougher fights, but I don't know when. We were in a bar with Coach Monty and Coach Karras, and trust me, I've been in some fights in my lifetime, but trying to get this man to be honored was definitely one of the toughest ones I've ever been in. Uh, this is about us, Coach. It's not about you, okay? And I know if I get up here and give you a bunch of accolades, you're going to give me that look that scared the hell out of me when I was a freshman in my first varsity huddle, looking at me like, what the hell are you doing in here, son? Um, the um, plaque on the Weibel Harder building that I, you know, the, the updated building, uh, I talk about three people in my lifetime. Coach Weibel, rest in peace. Coach Montgomery, uh, my offensive line coach, and Coach Karras, my offensive coordinator. I didn't come from one of those salt of the earth towns with great parents. I came from a much different environment and a much tougher environment. And I didn't have a dad that was a real good role model for me. So when I got here, I found three guys I wanted to be like. And those three men changed my life. And Coach Karras was kind of special because I found out he was an honor student. High grade point. Didn't take long being in a huddle with this guy, figuring out he was a very, very smart guy. And I wanted to emulate that. And uh, so one of the things that was kind of like, yeah, you can do this. Um, so that was one of the factors in, in um, you know, wanting to be an honor student. Um, when I first showed up, like I said, freshman year, I had some fear of him. I had respect for him. And as Coach Montgomery said, we never wanted to let him down. And, you know, you didn't want that look over the glasses like Harder. What are you doing? So um, then there's some other things along the line. I came back to Mount Union to get married on Labor Day weekend to Suzanne. And uh, we had an away scrimmage with Washington Jefferson. The coaching staff gave two years back, back to back, if Washington Jefferson would allow us to have the scrimmage here. What kind of coaching staff would do that for a 21-year-old kid who hadn't done anything other than play football for this school and wrestle for this school? That told me a lot about these gentlemen and what impact they were having on my life. Next thing, I'm up visiting with Coach Karras and and I didn't know if he knew I was a good player or not a good player, to be quite honest with you. And uh, he pulls out the highlight film, and we sit down and we watch it. He goes, Harder? He goes, I didn't realize how good you really were. He goes, man, when I 
pulled this highlight film together. He goes, I see you getting to the second level and third level making blocks, and you were pretty damn good. And, uh, you know, he didn't need to do that, right? championship for us and um, I go in the locker room and his first comment to me looks at me like he's mad as hell and goes harder heard you were on campus and you didn't come see me this year I said yeah coach he goes well don't ever make that mistake again and this is right after he's won a championship And what does he do next? He says, you know, Steve, you're as important to this program and us winning this national championship as anybody in this team. He goes, the way you played, your help in recruiting, and, you know, uh, your, your belief that we could be better. Now, that's Coach Karras, right? Giving you the credit for something he did, same way we saw last night at that dinner, I thought we were talking about the Immaculate Conception. I mean, you know, somehow, somehow, all this 96, 97, 98 guys just showed up and won three national championships, and it was everybody else got the credit except for him. Uh, you know, good CEOs know how to run those kind of programs and make you feel like you're the guy that made everything happen and he was just in the way. The uh, Nick Sang, I've got my 96 championship ring, president of Larry Karras. Um, after we dedicated the locker room, he sent this to me, which I still wear. It's probably the only piece of jewelry I'll ever wear in my life. Don't like wearing watches or anything else. So we come to the dinner, uh, which Coach Monty and myself and Coach Karras had at Paul Norrie's, the bar. And uh, Coach Montgomery said, the only way we're going to get him to do this is if we do something for the university that's significant. And that's why we're raising $2 million. Um, to make sure the football staff has those extra things in the budget that are necessary to play at the level we play at. So, Coach, there's my first commitment. That's $200,000. And until we get the rest of this money raised, I'm going to give at least $50,000 a year to it. And um, everybody needs to figure this out, okay? One of the things I've talked to Greg King about is how well the football players do at giving. And we, and, and we can do better, okay? And I'm going to break this down because I've studied accounting. If everybody gave $20 a week, 50 weeks a year, $1,000, five years, that's 5K, we can get this done pretty easily. But it's going to take a team effort to put that money together, make sure we honor this man in the proper way, and that's with an endowed chair for the football team. And he deserves that. And this is a side note. Because this guy cares more about that money being raised to help this football team than he does this sign on the stadium. I promise you that. And that's why, hopefully, after I get done with this, he's still not mad at me. So uh, that's what I have. Coach, thank you for everything you've done for me in my lifetime. You're a great example for a guy who didn't have a great dad. And... Uh, you know, one other thing I guess I should mention, I'm big into mentoring.
because of uh, the opportunities and the mentors that I had in my life. Uh, Ricky Harrison wanted to be here today, but he couldn't. Uh, he's coaching his son's basketball teams. But Ricky and I have gotten together and we're working hard to start a mentoring program that will come under uh, Parnell, ex-teammate. Um, and we're looking for men and women to mentor first-generation college students um, that uh, so when you leave this school you kind of have a better understanding of what they're going to face in life and I've had some uh, run-ins and some opportunities with kids from Mount Union that probably could have been a little bit better prepared for what it takes out there us first-generation kids you know we can't take it, we don't take it for granted. When you walk out of this school, you don't really know what's going to happen in the business world or whatever your profession is because you don't really have somebody that's been there, done that. So when I texted Coach Karras about the mentoring program, it took two minutes. Harder, that's the best idea you've ever had. And got his absolute support, something he wants to see done for the school. And we want to make sure all these first-generation athletes, you know, have a good mentor by their side. Um, and it's not going to take a lot with Zoom and technology a couple times a month, nine, ten months a year, a couple meetings a, a month. Uh, I think we can help a lot of kids uh, with those questions on what's next and how's this work and, and those kind of things. So I, I would encourage all of you. Uh, we'll hopefully be doing a little marketing effort, but I encourage all of you to become mentors for uh, for these kids that are coming to the school, especially the first generation kids uh, that don't have that kind of leadership in their life and understanding in their life of what it takes after college to be successful. So, Coach, again, thank you very much for everything you've done for me. Uh, um, Bill Borchard, I don't think this guy needs any. <laughs> Introduction, his name is everywhere in the stadium, is on every record over there. My son was sitting there doing the uh, calculations, and it, it, it's a video game, right? And the, the numbers this man put up at the school and the honors he received, and uh, uh, just an amazing guy. And now he's a successful guy in technology. Uh, I expect at some point we'll see Bill Borchard being CEO of a, a company at some point in his lifetime. I'm honored to represent, be up here representing a lot of the players that were here. And um, as I look here, somebody should get a picture from this angle, just all the people that are here for you, Coach. Um, you know, reading about the stadium, the oldest stadium in Ohio, I don't know how many people knew that. And I can only imagine you know, you being here for four years as a student athlete and then coaching here for 27 years, nobody can have more memories in this place than you. Um, but I, I thought I wanted to share one of my memories that I thought might be appropriate here today. Um, it was back in 95, and we were going to play our first playoff game. And it was against a team called Hanover that we hadn't played before. At least I, I don't think we played before. And going into that game that week, there was a lot of buzz about how prolific their offense was. A lot of people talking about it. Uh, the weather forecast that week uh, was a lot of rain, too. And, uh, Coach Sirianni, who's here, he was one of the offensive coaches that year. The game play, he helped put the game plan together and he was reviewing it that week and it had a lot of runs in it that week, which was pretty different, obviously. So we're leading up to that game, you know, going through the, the final, you know, Thursday, Friday walkthroughs and it's raining, raining and more rain. And that's all it's calling for. So we go, you know, for warm ups in the game right here on what used to be a grass field going through the warm-ups and we're doing 10 trap, 11 trap, everything up the middle. Hardly any passes in warm-ups. 
unusual, but you know that, that's what we needed to do. Um, weather conditions and the, the opponent we were facing. So we finished warm outs, and at the time we went into the locker room. I can't remember if Memorial was still here or if the Harder Building was there. Um, but we would always come out from a traditional perspective. We would come out of the east tunnel here, you know, right before the game, and and we'd run across the field over to the west side, um, which was our sideline. And Coach must have noticed something um, on that particular run or walk across the field. Because the, the game started and the plays would be coming in and they were pass plays. You know, after the first series, I go to the sideline, you know, Coach Siri, what, what's up? He goes, we're, we're throwing the ball. Uh, to kind of make a, a long story short, we finished that game. I think it was 52-15 or you know something like that. Obviously, we won. Brian Flynn had 160, 70 yards receiving. Todd Zufra had 256 yards receiving. Um, you know, we passed for close to 600 yards total in that game. Set all kinds of records. Um, I share that story because there's, there's two things that I took from that. Coach Karras with his 31 plus years at this stadium, nobody knew that field better. And he noticed that the inside the numbers and hash marks was muddy and torn up. Outside the hash marks was grass and in good shape. And he figured out, we can throw on this team, and we're going to throw. So nobody knew that knows this stadium better than coach. The second thing I took from that is an opposing team should never say they have the most prolific passing game <laughs> coming into Mount Union Stadium. Because there's no way we're going to run the ball against that team. Um, so, Coach, with your name on this stadium and the 5,600 seats that are within it, I think are symbolic. They're symbolic of the number of families and people that you've impacted over your years here. Um, and it's probably a lot more than that. A lot of people will think about the stats and the wins and, and all that good stuff. Um, but really, when you think about the players on that sideline, Dan Gorman and the athletic trainers, which my wife was one, your family on that sideline and on that track that were there watching that game, the times that we would have plyometrics at 6 in the morning where you invited the women's basketball team, you impacted so much more than just football here. You impacted everybody. And I just want to thank you for letting me be a part of that. I want to thank you on behalf of all the players that are here and that played for you. Um, and that's what I'll think of when I see Karis on the name of the stadium. All right. With that, I'd like to introduce Dr. Boatsman. On behalf of the University of Mount Union, I'd like to accept the renaming of Mount Union Stadium to Karis Stadium. Larry Karis' success has not only been limited to the football field, but rather to the entire institution. I like to tell people that we were on the faculty together, that we were both professors. And some of my greatest joy was at lunch telling people that of all the faculty, the best teacher was Larry Karras. And I just kind of enjoyed that. And I don't know that he ever heard me say it, but Larry, if you look out here today and you see these players, the success that they've had in life, you're the best teacher this place ever had. Congratulations.
taught our students how to win on the field even more in the field of life. So thank you, Larry, for your service, dedication to Mount Union, to our students. This recognition is so well-deserved, and I, I thank all the players and coaches that forced Larry to let us put his name on the stadium, as it should have been for many years. Larry and Linda, congratulations, and congratulations to everyone here today. Go Raiders. I'd like to welcome to the podium the head coach, Jeff Dart, class of 2008, for his remarks. Uh, thanks, Dr. Boatsman. Again, uh, th this is just such an awesome day for Mount Union and, and Mount Union football. So first, I want to congratulate uh, Coach Larry Karras. And for, for most of us, when we became players here, Coach Woj on the busing list always used to put Coach Linda up there too. So congratulations to Coach Linda. Um, LK always encouraged and demanded out of his players and coaches to be consistent in your daily grind. Um, for many of us, before the locker room was redone in, in 2018, we, we saw that sign every single day when we walked into it. God, family, football, and work, commitment, loyalty, and hope. And if there was anything that he ever did on a daily basis, it was consistently that. And he encouraged, like I said, his players and coaches to live that way too. So um, this is long overdue. I don't believe Mount Union would be what it is without him and especially Mount Union football. But the, the group of men that were just standing over here a few minutes ago when, when Steve was up here talking, and, and I can say this with confidence, I'm a better man, I'm a better husband, and I'm a better father because I played football here for you. And I believe that all the rest of you guys that were just over here staying with me would agree with that. So once again, LK's got some great um, sayings. Some of them I probably can't say up here. But <laughs> one of my favorite ones is excellence gets rewarded. And that's this today right now. So once again, thank you. <clears throat> at, uh, at this time, I want to bring up uh, Mr. Mike Jarrett, class of 1987, M Club Hall of Famer, uh, All-American, and first team all OAC. Thanks, Jeff. I appreciate that. Uh, and all the speakers before me, I appreciate all your words. It's, um, it's a great day to honor Coach Karras. You know, Coach Karras uh, started building the Mount Union brand and legacy in 1986 when he took over as the head football coach here. And he built the brand brick by brick. For most of you guys that played for LK, over the last 36 years or so, you, you probably, you know, when you're out and about, sometimes all over the country, and it comes up where you went to school. When you say Mount Union, one of the first things that people will say is, oh, I've heard of Mount Union. You guys have a great football program. Inevitably, as the conversation continues, people will ask me, hey, what was it like to play for Larry Karras? That's when the conversation gets really interesting. I could go on forever about that, as most of us here that played for LK would be able to say. So what I did is just made it short and sweet. I said, well, Larry had the brilliance of Einstein, the football knowledge of Lombardi, and the leadership style of General George Patton. I think all of us that played for LK would agree he was a mix of all three of those great men. But you know, um, I've known a lot of football coaches over the years that were very smart, knew football really well, and they were um, great leaders. 
but they didn't have the same success that Larry Karras had. In fact, they weren't even close. So after thinking about it, and I, I really, it really hit me, you know, when you play for LK, you're in the moment, and as you mature and get older, you get involved in different life experiences, things start to come together. And that's, that's what happened with me. I learned that Coach Karras had two other things that made him different, that set him apart from all of his peers. The first is he's a purpose-driven leader. Purpose, by definition, is a belief in someone or something that is so powerful, it's transformational. Coach Karras believed in his players. His purpose was his players. He believed in all of us, and we believed in him. As he began to develop the legacy and the brand at Mount Union, and he followed this purpose-driven approach to coaching, he did it from the inside out. He always thought of his purpose first, his players. You start with your purpose. And that created trust and loyalty from the players. Let me rephrase that, trust and fierce loyalty from the players. Trust is the, is the glue that holds all relationships together. When you have trust, you have a bond, a bond that's inseparable. It's sort of like the foxhole doctrine. When you have trust the two soldiers in the foxhole fighting the enemy, they have to trust each other. They believe in each other. They have each other's back. That's how we felt when we played for Coach Karras. We trusted each other. We had, we had each other's back. And that created fierce loyalty. We would run through a brick wall for Coach Karras. That trust and fierce loyalty it created a culture, a winning culture. In a winning culture, when you have that, you can't be stopped. The impossible becomes possible. You win 11 national championships, that's possible now. You win nearly 93% of your games, that's possible. You win 54 games in a row, you lose one game, and then you win 55 straight again. That's what a winning culture does. It makes you unstoppable, and it starts with, the, with Larry Karras. He was a purpose-driven leader who believed in his people, and we believed in him. The second thing that Larry Karras did that was different from any other coach and set him apart was he led with an infinite mindset. An infinite mindset is a leader who does not look at the outcomes. He looks at getting better every day. That's what an infinite-minded person does. Larry knew that a game, a single game on a Saturday was finite. It had a beginning and an end. What Larry preached to all of us day in and day out was get better. You should be constantly pursuing excellence. That's what an infinite-minded leader does, and that's what Larry Karras is. It was years ago I was at an event where there were some recruits and some parents there, and I asked the question to Coach Karras. I said, what makes Mount Union football so great? His answer was, quote, we practice hard Monday through Friday, so we're prepared for Saturday. That was it. There wasn't a long, drawn-out answer about how great Mount Union is and how great he is, how great the football. No, it was, we practice hard Monday through Friday, so we're prepared for Saturday. That's an infinite mindset. When you have players that are your purpose, as we were from Coach Karras, we believed. We believed in him, and he believed in us. The legacy and the brand that Coach Carrot built brick by brick started in 1986. You know, it was built mostly with just regular guys. Yeah, we had some great ones. Pierre Garçon, Jim Ballard, Cecil Shorts, Bill Borchardt, all-time great players. But 
Most of us were just regular guys who came from small high schools. And we wanted to be part of something bigger than ourselves. We learned how to trust each other. We learned how to have fierce loyalty. We created a culture, a winning culture, that could make mountains move and change the trajectory of Mount Union football and the university in a transformational way. I think everyone here that has spoken and here that is supporting Larry Karras wants to see the Mount Union brand that he created brick by brick 36 years ago to continue. So let's do that. I ask everyone here to support Larry Karras, Karras Stadium, the Larry Karras Endowment, to continue the legacy that Larry Karras began and continues to sustain. Thank you very much. Okay, we're going to go ahead and unveil the, um, the stadium. So if we all look to, or the uh, scoreboard, if we all look to the scoreboard. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here's uh, Coach Larry Karras. Good morning and thanks for coming. There's a lot of things you could be doing on a nice Saturday morning, but thanks for coming. Uh, thanks for the kind words. Uh, Bill and Pam are really good friends for me and Linda. <laughs> thanks, Bill. Uh, I don't remember hitting you with a fastball. <laughs> and it wouldn't have hurt anyway. It wouldn't have hurt anyway. <laughs> Steve Harder, Monty and I, we knew Steve, he could be way up here, couldn't he? He didn't know it yet, but we, we could see it. And then he, he made it. I think Monty pushed him more than I did because wrestling is so demanding. But uh, he could get there, and he did. Uh, Bill Borchert, that was... Mike Siriana's idea to run the ball. <laughs> that would have never been my idea. <laughs> uh, but that field could get muddy. My friend Jeff Southworth's son played for Hanover, and they did have a great quarterback, but he was not going to gain more yards passing than Bill Portrait was that day. Uh, when Bill visited, he, you know, he had, uh, I think he passed for 600 and some yards as a senior because his coach was a wing tee coach. But I, I remember as if we were still sitting up there, Bill said, well, coach, I can pass. <laughs> and he could, couldn't he? <laughs> Jeff, uh, Thanks for your remarks, Jeff. You showed me you're tough a few years ago. You're going to need to be tough because these are big shoes you're trying to fill, Jeff. <laughs> and Mike was an, as an achiever. In fact, Mike was an overachiever, wasn't he, Don? Mike was a linebacker as a freshman, but we came up with the idea of making him a defensive lineman, an interior defensive lineman, where his strength and ex extreme power and quickness would produce real dividends, and it did, didn't it? I think he got six sacks in the opening game. Was, was it against Worcester? My least favorite of all schools. <laughs> thank you, Michael. But thank you guys for your, your, kind, your kind words. Uh, when I talked about being here, a really good friend that I respect a lot said, well, I'll give you a chance to say thank you. And he was right. So thanks to my family. Linda drove to a lot of football games, and in every town, 
at every town. She found something fun at every town, and even in Ada. Uh, she found an antique store that she could enjoy as part of the trip, and she made the trips fun for the kids. So thank you, Linda, for all those years. Vince and Lindsay, Faith and Brian, Jan and Jeff, and your children and my grandchildren. You've been there through many of these games. Court's been there for the most. I'm very proud of Court. When we lost, he would get physically sick. That, that's a sign of a grandson that's taking football serious, the way you should take it. But thank you. I had a friend growing up, he's not here today, his name's Don, but his wife and sister are here. He was a special friend, he kind of comes along. Yeah, how many of you have a friend from elementary school on? You know, those, those friends are special. Uh, that'll be with you throughout thick and thin. And he was with me through a very difficult time that I had. He couldn't have been more supportive. Thank you, Don. I'm gonna mention some support staff that I, I have to mention them. I can't mention every assistant coach. I'll, I'll never get done, but uh, Michelle, Joe, Walia, Dodie, Ann, and Tiff did so much to uh, keep football flowing, to make it a fun experience for our fans, to help our fans get to away games. When we started in the playoffs, we played a lot of away games. Uh, thank you so much. A side note on, I think it was, it was my first playoff game. One of my friends went to the game, we were down at Dayton. He went to the game and he told me after the game, we, we won the game. And he said, you know, I got here and I bumped into Coach Wable and Coach Wable said, we have 0% chance to win this game. <laughs> hey, what do you make of that? And I said, I'm the one that told Coach Wable we got 0% chance to win this game. But the, the folks that helped make those playoff games, which were really a lot of work to host or to travel to for the team and the fans, seem relatively easy. Thank you so much. I forgot about Tom's comments. The thing I'll say about Tom is he reminded me once that I called him and asked him if he could show up for our intramural basketball game. And you know, that's proof that there are desperate times in being in charge of, a, an ask, of any part of this place. I, I called Tom and asked him to come up. Can you come tonight so the faculty, staff, intramural team will have five players? Huh? How about that, Tom? But some administration and faculty folks that were were a key to football success, Hugh J. Truman Turnquist. Mentors were mentioned. Truman was a good mentor. Cliff Shields. Very few of you know Cliff Shields, but I wouldn't be football coach at Mount without Cliff Shields' support. And I'll I'll mention the first president, and I I include every president that followed, but Harold Kohlenbrander was president when I was first AD and head coach. And he had a vision for university, college, at, the, at the time, college success and athletic success that he shared with me, and he was right on. And he worked hard to see that his vision became a reality, and it did. I'm, I'm thankful for every assistant coach we've had. I'm going to mention first Clyde Ross, who passed last August. Clyde came out to practice in 93, and at the end of practice, he was waiting. I didn't know him, but he wanted to talk to me, and he said, Coach, I, I'm volunteering to help, and I like to work with the kickers. <laughs> we, we, did, we had not had anybody work with the kickers, and it was such a... You know, it was almost like, what have I done to deserve this today? You know, that a coach would volunteer to come and work with the kickers. And his loss, the loss of Clyde last August, was hard on all of us because he became such an integral part of our football family. But I want to say this. Don and I were together for 30 years on the sidelines in football with Coach Wable and then together as as really co-head coaches. I coached offense, Don coached defense. We all shared the special teams. 
And when the head coach is the offensive coordinator, the defensive coordinator is an equal part of the staff. Uh, if we lost, I had to go to the press conference and answer the questions, and he didn't. But when we won, I got to go and act like the big shot. But we were partners in that. Jeff Wotowicz was with us for 27 years. He was the first coach we hired. We had an opening, and Don was going to move over and coach a defense, and we, who could we, who could we hire? And Jeff had been a, he'd been the, the great example of the student athlete at Mount Union that we, we wanted our student athletes to be like, so why not Jeff? And he would fit. We needed a secondary coach. And he came and he was with me through the entire 27-year experience. D1 coaches have an operations director who does all the planning. Jeff did that for our trips. I appreciate it very much. Vince was with me. Eric, my nephew, was with me. Jeff, my son-in-law, was with me. Having your family coach with you, tremendous feeling. I'm going to read some names. Paul, Joe, Joel, Rudy, Jason, Matt, that rings some bells, Ed, Marty, Dave, Mike and Nick, I put them together. Mike being the famous one, Nick the little brother has become the head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles. Stan and Ross, brothers, both in coaching still, Ron, Brian, Steve, Maj, John, Matt, Jesse, Matt, Daryl, Kyle, Zach, EJ, Mike, Robbie, Landon, Mike, I could go on and on, not enough time, the other speakers took too much. <laughs> Pre Larry Karras being head coach, a football player that was so good that being a teammate of his as a freshman, I recognized what an outstanding player he was. Our team wasn't good enough to rise up to his level of play, but in my mind, I wanted to recruit defensive players who would play like Dick Rose. Some of you may remember Dick Rose in the mid 60s, but he created an image in my mind of what a Mount Union defensive football player would play like and what a captain would be like in leading the team. I don't know if I've ever told that Dick, uh, Dick that, but I, I'm telling him now. Somebody will go and tell him, okay? The men who played football here. Mike's right. Our formula was players, formations, and then plays. You go in that order. What can the players do? But when we visited with players, when I visited with them when they came to visit and when the assistants met with them, there were three questions that I asked virtually every young man. I, I, I think I asked every young man unless I missed him and he got here for a visit and I was away on traveling or something. But the first question was, and this is an easy question to ask to a young guy who's a senior in high school, but it, are you a good young man? Well, that's a tough question when your parents or your grandparents are sitting there. But looking at the body language that emerges when they try to answer that question is a look into the soul of that young man. Two, do you have a passion for football? I didn't ask them if they like football. A lot of people like football, but they don't want to practice football. Do you have a passion for football? I, I, there were guys that almost came out of their chair. <sighs> yes. They hadn't had an opportunity yet to be uh, on a championship team, but I could see that they wanted to, and they'd do whatever us coaches asked to have a chance to. And three, are you going to get the grades you're capable of? Well, many young guys, they, were, they didn't know what they were capable of, but I'm looking at the information I have, and... Uh, well, Borchard, it says right here, you have a 3.4. I might say, what's your, what's your goal for college? I think Bill said 2.8. Uh, I'm like, 2.8? says here you're a 3.4. 
Well, what are you going to get, a 2.8 now? Well, how am I supposed to get a 3.4? Well, you're going to college with all the people your age. They're going to rise up and go to school. You're going to go to school. You're going to compete again, and you're going to get another 3.4, right? And he would, they would all agree with me, let's put it that way. Closing in here, um, before I talk about this stadium, look what it's surrounded by. We can see most of it. Uh, some of you guys may remember being in the basement of Memorial Hall for a locker room. Some of you remember, Dom and I would remember being underneath the east side of the stadium for a locker room. But then we went down to Memorial Hall when Timken was built. She's a good one. Okay. And then, you know, Steve stepped forward and in and, and, and honored Coach Wabel by building the locker room. And he stepped forward and remodeled it a couple of years ago. And now we have a wonderful locker room for the players. I hope you'll go down and look at it today. It's got some graphics that the young coaches helped design that are tremendous. Uh, look at number two, Luke. Luke is a Navy SEAL. Look at Luke down there. The Gulling Training Center. Mount Union acquired that land, and there was a building there. And Don and I knew Mount's taking that over on July 1st, and I finagled a key to it, and we went over on like December 30th, and we threw all the physical plant stuff out of it, and we power washed the walls, and we got ready to use the cement floor part, big area for weightlifting. Then we, Monty. New Year's Eve be darned. We're getting ready for using that building for weightlifting. So I called Paul Gulling up and asked him to come over and look at that in the little building that is beyond it and some other stuff that existed because I kind of had plans for how we could remodel it. And I asked Paul what he thought. Within 36 hours, Paul called and asked to come see me with a drawing for the Gulling Training Center. Took him a day and a half, which I thought was kind of long, but uh, <laughs> those of you that know Paul aren't surprised that, you know, we're not going to throw good money down a drain in an old place. Let's build something new. And we, we got that. Over there we have Montgomery Field, the Mastriotti family, and I'm not sure if, if anyone's here from that family today, but the Mastri... The Ma there's, yes, the Mastriani family, their dad was Joe Mastriani, and I don't know a harder working, more excitable guy at running a business than he was. But anyway, they stepped forward and, and dedicated that field, a great grass field in the region of land that the college had purchased. Dom helped us with the remodeling of the press box. If you see some old pictures, the press box doesn't look too great. Looks pretty good now, doesn't it? Dom had a vision for the top room on this end from the experiences he'd had at Cal of a, a room in the press box that could look out at the field or back at the campus. And since this one's on the end, we could look over at the MAC. What a, what a great room that is for us to have to use during games and to used for recruiting. We were in the Matt Campbell Plaza. Matt came and coached with us a couple years, and now he's, he's moved on to really some great coaching experiences at Toledo and now out at Iowa State. Thank you, Matt. Sean Moore. Sean Moore made possible the turf field out here, Sean Moore Field at Wable Park. And he also did this, which is very significant, much more significant than that field. In, I think, the 96 Stag Bowl, I disdained going for a field goal late in the first half. It was 24-21 Rowan. But I knew how far we could kick a field goal. I knew more than the ESPN announcer knew, I think, about how far we could kick a field goal. So we don't kick the field goal, and darn it, Borchert throws an incomplete pass on fourth down. Rowan proceeds to drive the ball down the field, and the announcer says, this could 
This could hurt Mount Union not going for the field goal. Coach Karras probably should have kicked the field goal. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> they were driving, but the quarterback was sacked by a deep back. And how does a deep back sack the quarterback unless the defensive coordinator is desperate and calls some type of a corner blitz? But remember when Sean got him, he fumbled, and there was no score by Rowan to make me look like a complete idiot. Was there a <laughs> So thank you for that play, Sean. You saved my reputation, and thank you for your generosity out with the field. And most recently, and some of you attended the dedication of the Dom and Karen Capers Football Coaching Center. Ooh, it, 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 every time I go in, I have two feelings. Extreme jealousy uh, that these guys get it and I didn't, but extreme happiness at what a pleasure it is to walk in there and help the coaches prepare for a day of practice or watch videos with some players and have a big screen where everybody's got a comfortable seat to look at practice or a game or the other team. It's, it's ideal. The stadium. Now I want to say this and I mean it and I, you, you know I say what I mean. Mount Union is forever. We went through Mount Union College, University of Mount Union, but Mount Union is forever. And Mount Union Stadium is forever. Karras Stadium may or may not be forever. Several years ago, the trustees were thinking about naming the, the, the field for my name, and I, I, I look. We're trying to sell the naming of the field so we can get turf. We're so tired of mud, we do about anything to be able to not play in the mud. So I say this, there'll come a time when there, there could be a donor that would give a gift significant enough to impact the student athletes at Mount Union, accept it and name the stadium after that individual. What will I care? I'm probably going to be history by then. All right. I don't say that to appear humble or, or, or I, I don't say it because I don't have gratitude for what's being done. I say it because I mean it. <laughs> but think about this stadium, the covered stands. I hope you've seen the 1914 picture of this stadium and then the 2014 picture that was taken from the same perspective. Try to see both today. They're both on campus. The covered stands. A lot of Ohio stadiums built in the early 1900s had covered stands. And that is a good idea, isn't it? That is such a good idea. I think of the tunnels. Bill mentioned walking through the tunnel. When I walked through the tunnel with the Raiders, it was like the fear of what might happen in this game left me, and I was confident then when I stepped on that grass or then the turf, we're in control of this game. Going through those tunnels, that's a special deal for me. The track, the track, my goodness, the track. Think of the Mount Union student athletes who've competed and run on the track. The 74 guys that won the cross country national championship, Pat Eaton, Jim Fox, and others, they ran around that track. Cinder track, Nate Hawthorne, Ricky Harrison's name came up, Derek Rippey. One time, Derek Rippey, this is the sidelight, Derek Rippey and Ricky Harrison are both running the 100 for Mount. Coach Holman has one of those last chance meets. These two can run so fast, six or seven guys from around the country come in because they want to qualify for nationals too. Holman, he needs guys to do a stopwatch. So I'll do it. Yeah, I'll do it. But I was so interested. I was supposed to get the third guy. But I was so interested in Ricky and how he did because he played football that the guys went by and I forgot to <laughs> stop my watch. So when, you know, they said second, 1067 third, I said 1071. <laughs> but, 
But the track and the, the, the recent national championship athletes that have competed here on this, tr this track for Coach Lucas, the turf itself used to run downhill. Does anyone remember that? It ran downhill. We, we thought it was big feet when we got it leveled. And we put sod down. And for some reason, the sod we bought, it came ripping up in great big chunks. We had to walk the field after every use to put them back. The players didn't like that very good. If we wanted turf, we'd have done about anything. The lights. This stadium has such a long, illustrious history of champions. Aviator champions. The aviators are here. They're going to stay here and use this wonderful stadium for the, for the, for the, the near future and maybe beyond. They kind of go like this on whether they want to build a stadium, but really, we wouldn't selfishly try to force them to build a stadium when this is available. It's so close to the high school, and the community members love the place. Visitors come here from other high schools to play. Our women's lacrosse team, team of champions, has been on this turf for recent years. In the past, our soccer teams have been successful. So this is a stadium that's seen a lot. Coach Wable, Coach Barrett, I said yesterday that if you, if, you, if you played football at Mount from 1956 until 2012, you could come to the stadium to see a game as an alum and you would see your head coach because Duke would be here, Ken would be here, and I was here. That's a reason, that kind of support from previous head coaches is the reason why alums come back. Alums come back to see somebody. Pete Peterson. Coach Wusky, great track coach. Coach Homan, great friend and track coach. And what would we have known about plyometrics without Coach Homan, Monty? He taught plyometrics to us. That's, you can blame Coach Homan for getting up at 5.30 in the morning, Bill. Wasn't our idea, it was his. <laughs> Mel Knowlton from the Aviators. I had the pleasure of sitting by Mel at Aviator Games after he'd retired. Humble, great coach. Kevin, Lucas, now. My son Vince in his seven years. And Joel Cockley leading the undefeated Raiders. And, and Jeff Dart right now. NFL stars have been on this field. Lenny Dawson played on this field. Alliance's finest, finest football player, I think. Most Alliance people seem to think so. Pierre, Cecil, Jim, Dom, Nick, Ron Lynn have been here. So getting my name put on, it's like, jeez, uh, Louise. But uh, thank you. I'll close with this. I've heard about, you know, uh, how great we did when I coached. How have we done since? Even better. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm keeping track. <laughs> Even better. Ten OAC seasons, now one was a short one. One OAC loss. I, I, I the, the, the uh, percentage of wins is higher than mine. I can't remember exactly, but I did figure it out. We're doing great. So I look at it like, is it safe to say that the best is yet to come? It's safe to feel that way. If we wouldn't have thought that in, in 1986, then we wouldn't have ever gone beyond being OAC champs. And I'll allude to two questions I was asked as head coach. I've always felt a need to apologize to the 92 team because we were good enough to be national champs, but when we went to lacrosse to play, it was a rough day to play. Uh, ice, solid ice, essentially ice field. It was so cold. But the game ended and we had lost. And I went into this press conference of just a few people and a young reporter slid the quickie stats across the table to me. 
And at the same time, he said, how's it feel to gain 601 yards, not punt, and lose? Now, that was an insult housed in a question, and I recognized that. But I, you know, whew, it was true. We, we couldn't score in the red zone. We tried to kick field goals, but in defense of the kicker, it's hard to kick off an ice surface. Don's defense held lacrosse to, I think, 278 yards, but we lost. So I was dealing with it over Christmas vacation, and the team returned in January. We had a meeting to discuss our workouts. And after I laid out what we're going to do, uh, Ed Bubonix, who had missed the 92 season with a back injury, and he was, as you guys remember, Ed was a really good player. So we missed him. But he couldn't play that year. But he was coming back, and he was in with a group of seniors, and he said, Coach, uh, we have a question for you. And I think he felt he was speaking for the group. I go, yeah. He goes, well, Coach, we feel like we're good enough to win the national championship. We want to know if you believe if we can win the national championship. Now, you know, let me think about that and I'll get back to you in a few days didn't seem to be a good answer. <laughs> but Ed, he put me on the spot. And I think he recognized in me what I knew I had was a little bit of fear of thinking that you could actually go the whole way. I did my best to show a little bravado and answer his question. Yes, yes, yes. But I had to deal with that. I also had to deal with that goal line offense. But we fixed both issues. I addressed the goal line offense by passing more on the goal line. If you want to check the statistics that followed the 92 season, I welcome you to go back and take a look at the touchdown passes that were thrown inside the 20-yard line. And two, I just kept telling myself, if these players believe this, you have to convince yourself that they are right and believe like they do. So sometimes in any profession or business, listening to the questions and then trying to figure out the answers is about the only way you can grow. So, I don't know, is Eddie here today? Yeah, Eddie. Thanks for asking that question. That, that was a good question. So thank you. It's, it's uh, quite an honor for my family, my extended family. My mom and dad were at games. My brothers, Jim uh, and Doug, my sisters, Kim and Renee, were at every game they could be. Bob and Helen were at most of the games. Joe Garn gave them rides when they couldn't drive anymore. Uh, but I think I was, I mentioned this morning that Dom Capers was prepared when he left Buffalo by the folks at Buffalo. And I think I was prepared when I left Palmyra by my family at Palmyra to step into a new role and be ready for it. So family's always kind of been everything. Uh, to all you players that are here, congratulations. Uh, what you did was, uh, when I look back, it, it's almost, uh, it, it's hard to, to visualize it myself, and I was right there for every game with you. But it was just astounding how good you played in big moments. That's the mark of a true champion. So congratulations to you guys. Thank you to the my family, the coaches, my unions, faculty, administration, and staff that have been with us the whole way, and to everyone who volunteered, like Joe and Clyde always did. Thank you. Do I really need to close this? <laughs> I don't know. Um, there's a lot of stories, Coach. 
I'm not going to get into hardly any of them, but I do want to congratulate the Karras family. And um, very, very fitting, very fitting coach. You know, I, I never really ever thought that Steve and I would be able to get that done that night. I figured that, you know, as soon as you start talking, as soon as we started talking about it, you start changing the subject all the time. And we just can't, we, we just had to keep putting you back. Your players wanted to do this for you. Your coaches wanted to do this for your family. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, Linda, I know firsthand um, you're such a great coach's wife. And I know that none of us could ever have been successful without the support of our wives, and I'm also appreciative of, of mine. So, congratulations to you and your family. You guys are a true football family, you know. Um, and I've admired that from from the time that I met you guys. I remember you guys took us, I think, out to Walkers when Teresa and I first came back to Alliance. You took us out to to dinner, and I still remember that night. So, the one thing that. Uh, is a little bit humorous that um, I remember when we first came came back I would read on the uh, I don't know where I saw it because I'm not big on social me media but everybody kept calling you a goat it's like happy birthday to the goat I, I had no idea what that meant and I was just trying to like hey Vince why are you calling your dad a goat you know and then he said Monty you've never heard of the goat I, no, it stands for the greatest of all time, and you are. <laughs> well, you know, Coach, um, and, and you know, one of the, one of the things that I really want to um, emphasize is we were sitting in the um, in the B and B yesterday with Dom and Karen Capers, and I was listening to Dom's wisdom, just talking about you know. Um, all the different personnel groups and everything like that. And then, then he was talking about, uh, you know, all the young coaches in the NFL and how it's all about the tree, you know, all about the tree. And um, <clears throat> on behalf of all of the coaches that have coached for you, have coached with you, all the players that have played for you and how successful they are, that's all a product of the culture that you created here. We created. But I just want you to know um, from all of them, thank you for allowing us to put your name on the stadium. And um, your, your coaching tree is just a small example of the impact that you've made nationwide. And I'm, I, I feel very humbled to be able to stand up here and recognize you for that. Um, I remember the first time I met you, you were on a roof down there with Roger Tingley. And um, <laughs> I'm thinking, oh, this, this, this guy here is going to be our new offensive coordinator. And he goes, well, what position do you play? Um, offensive guard. And just kind of looked at me, and it's like, uh, uh, I didn't think that he would ever think I'd be able to play here, but gave me the chance. If I didn't, you proved me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, the... Uh, the last thing I'd like to, to leave, I know that we have to get moving down to the Gresco Memorial and to the golf outing, but the greatest compliment that I think that I could um, give you, Coach, is that um, I think that the, the best definition of a leader is whenever they can produce an atmosphere where nobody wants to disappoint them. And I know that that, on behalf of all of the players that played for you and the coaches that coached for you and for myself, I never wanted to disappoint you. So congratulations to all of you. Congratulations again, Coach. Here,